Does it necessarily mean because this guy's a doctor, he knows what he's talking about? No. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplacemoreneats.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Brian Sutterer. This guy is um, blowing up right now because of his video on perfect leg kicks when it's actually just a clickbait video about uh, Adesanya's gyno. So <laughs> yesterday I was uh, like, obviously I put out a video as well as Greg, as well as this Brian guy I noticed. And pretty quickly this guy's uh, video got picked up by the algorithm. So um, it went up to number seven on trending. It was at 384,000 views. Um, like pretty fucking quick. And then I, I'm like, damn, like why? YouTube just loves the cookie cutter, you know, like this guy's a doctor, let's push his shit. Hours later, it's up to number five. And I'm like, dude, like I just put out a 30 minute breakdown of elaborate pharmacology and endocrinology and this guy's video <laughs> about leg kicks for the entirety of it. And then like four minutes of a half-assed attempt to explain gynecomastia is getting pushed. I wake up this morning, it's fucking number three on trending right now as of recording this video. Right now it is, let's refresh it again. Number three on trending, 808,000 views. By the time I publish this, this thing might have a million fucking views. And the video wasn't even about like gynecomastia barely. This guy's jumped up like 10K subs in one day. So we all know people aren't here to actually listen to him talk about leg kicks. They wanna see his stance. <laughs> on the gynecomastia and some of these comments man like on my video even guy comes in he says take it from a medic gyno and only one nipple is highly unlikely as high estrogen levels are systemic and not localized meaning both would be affected i think brian stutter md on youtube has a good list of differentials for this it's like could you sound more fucking pretentious when you're giving out misinformation buddy um this guy says i'm also a medic and i do not agree i'm also a doctor now anyway i'm gonna get into brian's uh elaboration in a sec here but some of the comments on my set on my comment section coming from that guy's fucking video i just came from a doctor's channel who went over this and said it was most likely caused by damage if it was steroid use it would most likely show up on both nipples which makes sense everyone in here listening to bro science peddlers Anyone buying this BS is a hater. Stay mad. Go watch video of doctors explaining how this isn't from that. I watched a doctor give his opinion on Izzy's lump. The main takeaway he had regarding PEDs is that typically when you imbalance your hormones, it's equally distributed throughout the body. Oh, man. So, and going on to Twitter, I, ha I always post like a little snippet on Twitter of my video. And <laughs> first comment, um... This is such BS. Remember when media slash journals had integrity? If it was gyno, it would be on both sides, you muppet. Hormones don't choose sides. And I'm like, I'm shaking my fucking head at this shit. Somebody backs me up immediately and posts this picture of Ronnie Coleman with massive amounts of gyno on one side, completely asymmetrical. So anyway, I'm gonna get into Brian's video and we're, go we're going to get through it point by point here. Israel Adesanya defended his title at UFC 253 in part due to a bunch of perfectly executed lower leg kicks. And he also raised some eyebrows based on this picture of his chest. So, you know, the video is about the leg kicks, but the chest is in there for like four minutes, but the video is getting pushed massively. We all know it's because of the gyno. So I'm gonna, you know, do you a solid and skip through the entire explanation of the leg kicks because we all know what we're actually here for. So let's get to the gyno part. Brian is walking out of the octagon here and basically what everybody's looking at is how his pec muscle or his chest on the right side looks asymmetric, meaning it's different from the left side with kind of this little bit of bulging and kind of almost drooping in the chest. You can see another view of it here in the interview after the fight, how clearly there's kind of this mass or something kind of in that area of the chest on the right side that definitely isn't there on the left. Now I've gone back and I've looked at pictures of Adesanya and certainly this looks like something that's new or something that's different. The speculation you're gonna see pop up online is for something called gynecomastia. And yeah, that's exactly what I said. That's what Greg said, but let's listen to what this guy has to say. Gynecomastia is something that happens when there's enlarging of the tissue there under the chest that's abnormal, but it's specifically the gland of the breast tissue. Now, the reason this is causing people to bring this up 
is because gynecomastia is caused oftentimes by abnormal levels of hormones within your body. That is true. Particularly higher levels of estrogen and lower levels of testosterone. No, that's inaccurate. Actually, it's a ratio of the stimulatory inputs relative to inhibitory inputs. So just because you have a, you could have an in-range estradiol level, but if you're hypogonadal to the point where you don't have enough um, bioavailable testosterone or DHT to inhibit estrogen-induced RNA transcription at the receptor site in the breast tissue, you're gonna develop gynecomastia even if you have low estrogen levels clinically on a piece of paper in a therapeutic reference range. So no, it's not just high estrogen relative to testosterone. In addition to that, if you have negative feedback to your HPTA via an exogenous anabolic androgenic steroid and you shut yourself down, you put yourself in a position where, again, even if you have an estrogen level that's in range, you could still develop gyno when you come off of that exogenous hormone if it wasn't androgenic enough to offset that estrogen-induced RNA transcription, like I said. So no, it's not just high estrogen relative to low testosterone. In addition to that, there are other factors that upregulate aromatase activity, um, aromatase expression, and can exacerbate things that have nothing to do with your E2 on a piece of paper. So even if you have um, if you have HGH, IGF-1 levels that are too high, if you have um, progesterone, prolactin, things that upregulate uh, um, or agonists of the progesterone receptor and increase um, aromatase expression, like I said, and upregulate mechanisms in the body that exacerbate gynecomastia development. It's all about stimulatory inputs. It's not just estrogen and the sheer value on a piece of paper. And I could already tell off the bat listening to this guy get into it that he doesn't really know a lot about gynecomastia and he is for what i understand a physical medicine and rehabilitation doctor so no this guy is not an endocrinologist so just because he is a doctor it doesn't necessarily mean he's an expert and how many times have you gone to your doctor to get blood work or get some sort of thing assessed that has to do with um hormones and they have no idea what they're fucking talking about even though they're you know educated and have their they're a fucking doctor like does it necessarily mean because this guy's a doctor he knows what he's talking about no classically of course estrogen is the female hormone and testosterone is a male hormone and so higher levels of estrogen will cause development of that tissue now so yeah obviously like i said if you have high estrogen relative to your bioavailable testosterone and DHT notably, DHT being the most androgenic hormone in the body that otherwise antagonizes this estrogenic activity at the breast tissue. Um, yeah, if you're using a compound that is a substrate for aromatase and has a significant amount of es estrogenicity, it can overwhelm the um, inhibitory inputs that would otherwise antagonize that. But in addition to that, like I said, remember going back to the, just because you have a, you know, clinically you could have a therapeutic within the therapeutic reference range you could have a in-range estradiol level um and still develop gyno just based on the fact that you don't have enough androgenicity in the body to offset that now everybody should slow down the controversy train here because there are so many other things that could be going on here and could explain this i don't think though that this is a pec tear i saw that pop up online and there's no way that Adesanya would have been able to fight with a pec tear. I don't think it was a pec tear either, so he's spot on here. But again, he's a, you know, sports doc, sports, you know, um, specialty is this what you would he'd be getting into here. So this is where he's kind of shining. So what I've highlighted here is the actual pec major muscle. And one important thing to know about pec tears is they oftentimes will occur over actually here where the pec inserts onto the arm bone you're not gonna get just like an isolated tear kind of underneath the chest skin that would cause that type of appearance. So, yeah, that's true. And I'm not going to, you know, elaborate too much more on that, but yeah, that's 100% spot on. And you would see typically that giant like indent he had on that side, which is notable, but you wouldn't just see the manifestation of a fucking hanging mass of glandular tissue. Rather, you would see <laughs> like massive amounts of fucking bruising everywhere and a different look. It wouldn't look the way it did. If we hide the pec major, there is a muscle underneath called the pec minor. But again, super, super rare. I don't know if I've ever even seen or heard of that being torn. And it's gonna tear higher up by the shoulder 
then it is down by the chest and it's not gonna give that appearance. The other thing we have to think about here is if this is just accumulation of some fatty tissue, that'd be something called pseudogynecomastia, and that can be from a number of different totally benign things, even things just like repetitive trauma to an area, which would make complete sense for a mixed martial artist. Okay, so that is something I want to touch on because that is a very good point is hypothetically, if you were in training and had a significant amount of trauma to that spot, could you develop gynecomastia from it? And would it be pseudo Um, I guess that's debatable, but there is clinical literature that suggests that trauma through fighting, like let's just say you get hit fucking super hard in that spot, you could trigger actual gynecomastia. So in this paper here, we have acute tissue trauma as a trigger for gynecomastia development and progression. So um, here we have the difference between dissected specimens of two breasts, significant difference in the amount of removed tissue is observed. This is a 35 year old fighter had been hit with knuckle duster in the left breast 13 months ago. Four weeks afterwards, a unilateral breast enlargement on the traumatized side appeared and started progressing over time. The clinical history revealed a previously existing mild symmetrical bilateral gynecomastia presented since puberty with no familial history or medication use, including anabolic steroids. So again, the trauma is exacerbating existing gynecomastia that was relatively um, small previously, but is now being increased in growth somehow. But again, this is actual gynecomastia here, even via the trauma. So again, this is a clinical diagnosis here of fucking gynecomastia presented since puberty induced hormonally. So discussion, common causes for male breast enlargement include hormonal aberrations, carcinoma, endocrine disease, systemic disorders, and certain drugs. Obesity can be associated with increased peripheral conversions of androgens to estrogens and is often associated with a higher pre prevalence of gynecomastia. And basically, if you wanna see a detailed breakdown, deep dive into pharmacology and endocrinology about gynecomastia development, you can check out my video I just made the other day on it, and how if you're fat, this can basically increase your estrogen levels, increase the amount of negative feedback to your HPTA, and then lower your testosterone levels, and it's a vicious cycle of a increasingly dominant estrogen to androgen profile, which then results in decreased androgen levels over time and you having a higher likelihood of gynecomastia development. Um, however, our patient was non-obese, BMI 25.06, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, we observed a significant macroscopic difference in the amount of tissue which was removed from both sides. As you can see in figure one, our clinical observations correlated with histological findings showed no significant fat deposition and obvious differences between the two samples. Florid pattern changes in the left breast, the traumatized one, and fibrous pattern changes in the right breast, which was a sign of active process of proliferation on the left side. So, presentation of unilateral breast enlargements or onset of asymmetrical changes requires exclusion of breast neoplasm, which had been done. We even assume that the asymmetrical enlargement of the left breast can be a result of a resorbed hematoma with fibrosis, but the histological study revealed a Paucity of fibrotic changes bilaterally. Furthermore, more fibrosis was found in the right breast, the one with the stable gynecomastia. The clinical case presented in this short commentary article was solved by well-known surgical approach, by, but the exact etiology of the new onset of previously existing stable gynecomastia remains unclear to us. Again, previously existing stable gynecomastia, which was already gynecomastia. However, we are convinced that the pathophysiology was related to the trauma he suffered. We were unable to find any records on the exact relation between the acute trauma and the onset and or the progression of gynecomastia. An interesting hypothesis is the one of Kang, blah, 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 um, could be a local release of growth factors that are supposed to trigger differentiation of precursor cells to new mature glandular proliferation and in turn causing the development of gynecomastia. And again, this ties back into stimulatory inputs. The GH IGF-1 axis is a strong regulator of um, tissue growth in the body, including gynecomastia. And this is why using exogenous growth hormone significantly upregulates aromatase expression um, in certain tissues. And this is why you can, again, another thing that has nothing to do with the representation of an absolute value on a piece of paper via your estradiol level relative to your androgens, there's other stimulatory inputs that exacerbate things. So conclusion, the stingle Single episode of blunt traumatic injury to the breast could play a main role for progression of pre-existing gynecomastia. It is also possible to be a trigger of de novo development of this condition. So anyways, getting back to the Brian Stutter video. Also, if there was some imbalance of hormones in his body causing this, 
it would be really, really, really rare and odd for it to affect just one side. Hormones are circulating all throughout the blood, all throughout the body. And so the fact that this is just on one side makes that controversial topic even much less likely. So this was the part that really fucking ground my, <laughs> grinded my gears. And this is like a lot of people came to comment this on my video. And frankly, I probably wouldn't have even touched on this if so many people weren't coming over to tell me how wrong I was to suggest that it could even be hormonally induced. So me and Greg both talked about the performance enhancing drug angle, the pharmacology, the endocrinology, because we have years of experience with this. Greg has decades of experience bodybuilding. I have many years of experience with researching endocrinology and pharmacology in great detail. I own a TRT clinic myself and have doctors who work under me in my clinic who talk about this shit on a daily basis and specialize in this shit. And then we have Brian Sutter telling us that you can't develop gyno on one side because of a hormonal imbalance. So let's go see historically what bodybuilders with gyno look like. So here we have Ronnie Coleman, one of the probably the greatest bodybuilder of all time or arguably one of them. And what do we see here? We see a normal chest and then here we see blatant gynecomastia development. Now, Let's move on to Franco Colombo. This looks like a pretty normal uh, peck, does it not? Look at the right one though. Is this guy not famous for his gyno development that partly played in his uh, current controversial win that a lot of people think he shouldn't have won because he had blatant gynecomastia development on one side of the body only? What do you think that was induced by? Performance enhancing drug use. Here he is winning the fucking championship. Look at that gyno on the right side. Look at the lack of it on the left side. Let's look at this guy. Gyno on both sides, but significantly more apparent on the left side and far more developed. Let's look at this guy. Significantly more apparent on the right side. Significantly more developed. Asymmetrical. Next guy, Johnny Jackson. Left side, giant fucking titty. Right side, not really. Let's go to another one. Left side, blatant gynecomastia. Right side, none that you can even tell whatsoever. Michael Lockett, one side, significantly more developed than the other. Here's another shot of him. Does the gyno look like it's equal on both sides? No, it doesn't. Here it is again. Does it look equally developed on both sides? No, it doesn't. Even if you just look at <laughs> breast tissue development in women, like we're not even looking at like guys using performance sensing drugs, like it's so common to see asymmetric gyno development in men from steroid use. Now, when you even look at women that have normal estrogen production, they aren't using synthetic anabolic androgenic agents. They traditionally often have asymmetrical breasts just from normal hormone production. Like literally go do a simple Google search. How common is asymmetrical breast tissue? Breast, breast asymmetry is very common and affects more than half more than half of all women. So it's like, that's something hormonal too. That's literally your estrogen levels relative to your androgens. Again, every woman who develops titties, it's very common for it to be asymmetrical. For this, So for this guy to suggest that it's impossible and because you have a systemic level of hormones that your blood serum concentration is a certain amount, so it somehow means that one tit equals the other, that's so not the case in normal people that actually you're supposed to have tits, nor is it correct in performance enhancing athletes that use these exogenous hormones either. So yeah, I'll acknowledge that this looks abnormal. This looks kind of odd and different and does appear to be some sort of abnormal tissue or mass there. Don't think it's a pec tear. And I don't think there's reason for you guys to run off and start speculating. And so I'm not gonna do the same. But that's it for this video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. So the reason I didn't like this video at all was, well, like obviously he has good information. I'm not gonna shit on him. Uh, well, I already did kind of, but I mean like the fact that the video, like it, it almost should have just been like two videos, dude, like a leg kick video and then a gyno video. Cause we all know this, the point of this was to drive the views up for this one video. And you touched on it for like three and a half minutes or four minutes and the information was subpar and incorrect. So to me, it's just annoying that this is being pushed by the algorithm right now when me and Greg literally put out an exact video describing gynecomastia developments in bodybuilders and performance enhancing athletes that's directly relevant to the situation is actually factually correct. And then this guy comes out, puts out an incorrect video with incorrect information and it's on fucking number three on trending. Like, let me refresh and see where it's at now. Israel Adesanya defended his title. 
Okay, it's number four on trending now, but it's 819,000 views. Like this thing's gonna have like a million views by the time I put out my video. And mine's gonna be at like, it's gonna be at like 130K or something. And I don't know what Greg's is at right now, but last I checked it was at like about the same. So, you know, like for me, it's just frustrating to see that like all the people in the comment section that are so like naive and think that just cause this guy's a docker that it somehow means he's correct. Like I'm not saying this guy doesn't put out good information, he has very good videos that are like elaborate breakdowns about like sports related injuries and, uh, you know, fucking stuff related to the actual sports, um, and less to do with endocrinology. And he's clearly, you know, like stepping outside his wheelhouse to talk about this. But the fact that just because he's a doctor, it doesn't mean that he automatically is correct. So for people to come under my video and fucking say, if it was gyno, it'd be on both sides. Hormones don't choose sides. So I'm like, dude, you've obviously have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. And this guy backed me up immediately. Um, and you go on Twitter and there's people talking about, let's see, I'm build, I'm willing to bet that Izzy's 100% clean. Uh, this guy, he's not on steroids. Go watch the video. And then he posts the doctor's video. This guy responds, watch this guy instead. Focuses only on the gyno and is a channel solely dedicated to gear in the body. And this guy replies, I don't know this guy's med medical credentials because he looks like a meathead. But the other dude is an actual doctor, so I'll take his word for it. I own a fucking TRT clinic. I literally make this information out of my own personal passion for this fucking topic, not gynecomastia specifically, but it ties into it. I know so much about fucking hormone management. And then just because I don't have a fucking, I'm not a doctor, somehow what I say to the average person is not worth being pushed on YouTube's algorithm. And people just assume it's incorrect because I don't have a fucking MD beside my channel name. So one guy is a general physician. The other guy actually takes roids and formulates plans for celebrities and actors to get big in a certain amount of time. And that's true. Over the years, I've actually started to work with pretty high profile guys. I don't advertise my fucking services because I don't do ongoing coaching, but I do consult calls for guys at the Olympia level now. Celebrities, guys in Hollywood. I don't make it very well known, but I know what the fuck I'm talking about. And this is why people watch my channel for this stuff. Yeah, the doc didn't seem to think it was anything. If both tits were inflated, then yeah, maybe, but it's only one. Derek goes into that too. Watch the vid. He really explores all angles. Can you sum it up for me? Blah, 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 blah. Um, so anyway, and you go to this doctor's, the channel, and you go into the comment section. And it's like the top thing. I love how people come to listen to a trained medical doctor in all caps, then tell him he's wrong laughing fucking sideways face because it's so funny doctor it's gyno random guy on youtube definitely is gyno or doctor it's not gyno random guy on youtube definitely is gyno i've seen it before he's juiced to the gills wait i'm watching this video because it's trending and then basically the comment section is just like a bunch of guys coming in here to you know they're like arguing with each other a bunch of guys trying to back up the doctor because he's a doctor he's a yeah uh let's see doctors can never be wrong right just like a politician can never be wrong about politics or a police officer can never be wrong about the law like this guy knows what the fuck is up and then these guys say okay and what doctorate do you possess to make that claim i'm surprised there's still a war and hungry kids around the world you'd think with how smart you youtuber comments are it would all be fixed like fuck, dude how many laughing faces can you use what are your qualifications oh wait you've been successfully brainwashed like exactly every single person just because this guy is a doctor and he's trending it doesn't mean he's correct so just be aware of where you're getting inf your information from and be able to differentiate between the bullshit because i'm not saying this guy doesn't have good information it's just on this particular topic when it comes to the pharmacology of performance enhancing drug use and hormones and endocrinology he's way off the fucking mark dude like every how many cases of gynecomastia have you seen in sport in bodybuilding especially with the best representation of anabolic steroid use in sport where gynecomastia is totally asymmetric and it's not symmetric it's not symmetrically distributed exactly the same just because your blood serum concentration of your estrogen levels is a certain amount and all the other things i already mentioned which this video is going to get into half an hour territory again if i keep rambling so i'm not going to so anyways thank you guys for watching if you want to see my deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology performance enhancing drug use risk management um and uh endocrinology hormone replacement therapy things of that nature Subscribe, follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts if you want to follow on audio. And if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, I highly recommend you do if you want to get emailed my deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology. Those are far more elaborate than my videos and they are broken down into concise subsections with a table of contents and have hyperlinks to all the clinical studies I reference for your own 
uh, personal research if you wish to delve into it further. So a lot of incentives to sign up for that because you won't get sent those otherwise. It's 100% free. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, notably my TRT clinic. If you want to work with doctors who are, you know, qualified because they're a fucking doctor, um, obviously, you know, you want to work with somebody who has experience with uh, endocrinology and pharmacology and, uh, you know, years of experience actually prescribing hormone replacement therapy or otherwise addressing your blood work and your symptoms to actually make an informed, uh, educated decision on what may be the best approach for you to optimize your quality of life and your health. Um, you wanna work with somebody who actually does this. So that is where having a good uh, t doctor who specializes in this would come into play. And they'll look at your blood work A to Z, address any imbalances or deficiencies and create a specialized protocol just for you based on your individual needs, not just based on you know some random cookie cutter protocol that some random um, HRT clinics are doing nowadays because nobody is uh, following the research and staying up to date on what the um, best practices are based on from what I've seen. So if you want to get hooked up with the best quality information that I try to put out on my channel and get actual doctors to, who actually specialize in this to look at you, then uh, check that out. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. So it's super convenient. It's the way of the future, in my opinion. And if you want to support anything else I'm associated with, it's all video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.